Ladies and gentlemen of the Ice Earth community, welcome to Podcast in Stone. This is another very special episode. We've gone from then till now. Two weeks ago, we had Gene Adam on the show. Today, we have the lead singer of Iced Motherfucking Earth. Please welcome Stu Block. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. You know, Stu, welcome. Uh, good to be on. Good to be on. Thanks for having me. I know you uh, You guys are pretty much dedicated to, to a lot of things Iced Earth there. So this whole podcast is just all Iced Earth, right? Yeah, man. Everything. Nice. nice. All Iced Earth. Right on, right on. Well, thanks for supporting, guys, and thanks for keeping and spreading the word. We really value, we really value people like you, man, because uh, you guys, you guys are out there on the ground, you know, spreading the word and and doing these awesome podcasts. And uh, more than happy to come on and uh, and chat with you guys today. Well, it means a lot to us. Thank you. It means a lot, man. Now uh, I'm gonna kick it off. Uh, um, back in June, you guys uh, released Incorruptible. Uh, I don't know about you, but I say you guys are on a roll. Like the last okay. like seven years, it's just killer album, killer album, killer album, and yeah, it's uh, thank you, man. and it's been getting like rave reviews across the board. Um, yeah, it's been doing good, man. Yeah, we're really we're really happy about uh, how how this came out. We're happy about obviously every album that we do. We're proud of um, uh, this one. This one um, is just a whole other beast. Um, I think it shows. Like, from my standpoint, I think it shows a bit, like, I'm maturing a little bit more in regards to, like, I'm, I'm always learning with my voice. I'm always learning, and if I'm not learning, then I'm, I'm worried, right? But, uh, right. And, uh, but if, uh, you know, like, with this album, I really, like, I've always, I've always kind of, I think I've always fit in, I've always fit in Ice Earth. Like, my voice, you know, is, has, has always kind of fit, fit what they're looking for and stuff like that. But I think it's just kind of getting more and more comfortable and I'm finding my more of my own as it were. So, um, but, uh, I think it's, I think it's a great album. I think it touches on a lot of great subject matters. And I, I think that uh, a lot of the fans will really relate to it. Um, even if they, you know, cause a lot of Ice Earth songs, you can, you can kind of interpret yourself as well. So, right. you know, you can, it's not, some of it's not literal. Some of it is literal, but you can also twist it because it's in, into your own life as well. So I think there's a lot of that happening on this record. And um, it's, uh, it's got, man, it's got a, just a great eclectic mix of songs. It's not, you know, you got seven headed, like one minute, you know, you're like, <laughs> with it, and you got seven headed whore. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Right. right? So we're, we're really happy the, the way it takes you on that emotional roller coaster for sure. Absolutely. Um, in, in regards to Incorruptible, um, did you have to think about your vocals differently from your previous releases? I never do. You know what, man? I, or guys, I never really do. I never sit there and go, okay, on this, on this album, this is the type of vocal I'm going to use. I really let the music speak to me. Um, you know, like in Plagues of Babylon, I, I heard from a lot of fans, hey, man, how come you didn't do, how come the highs are more of a, more of an aesthetic thing you know how come you don't hear those falsettos as much can you do it anymore and i'm like well of course i can <laughs> but right. i'm not you know i'm not out there to prove anything to anybody or i'm not i'm i'm really just proving something to myself that i can progress as a singer and and i and like i said i, I let i let each song talk like speak to me and 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 i can, i always hear several different voices in my head and i kind of just narrow it down to a couple or even just one and uh, and I just let it speak to me. And if it calls for some falsetto work, then it calls for some falsetto work. But you know, I, but again, like I said, I'm maybe subconsciously I am sort of going. You know, I want to try something new. Like there's always those spur of the moment situations on the album. Like even in the studio, where you're like, well, you know what? Let's try something new. And that was with Seven Headed Whore. Seven Headed Whore was like a super crazy like. You know, John came up with the the music and the lyrics and stuff, and he's like, he's like, I want to find a voice that is just sinister and evil. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I mean, I could rail him into the death metal thing, and he goes, he actually looked at me. He goes, okay, well, let's start there. I know we're not going to go death metal, but let's start with just. He's like, he's like, let's just press play and let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens, kind of thing. And I started working it a little bit, and then I came up with this this type of vocal that you know it's just really thrashy i guess really kind of like a it's like a, a, it's, it, 
in between, right? Like it's, yeah. it's different. I've never really heard anything like it before. So, to to um, me, it's like a unique. I was style. almost trying to shadow. Uh, I was trying to. Um, um, I was trying to like uh, uh, channel uh, Chuck Schuldiner. Uh, from death a little bit like I was I was okay. totally getting that feel you know what I mean I mean I'm never gonna sound like him but I'm like hey let's see what happens kind of thing and and it and I think it was pretty cool but those are really cool magical things that happen um on the album because it's not always like okay I write the song I write the lyrics I write the cadence you know and melodies or whatever or you know and and it's just I have a set vocal or something like that right right it's not how it works um, when John writes the music, it speaks to me. And, and so I'll listen to it and he'll say, hey, come up. This is the verse or this is the, you know, come up with a bridge section. And just like I said, it just speaks to me. And whatever happens kind of happens. And and uh, I think that's the cool thing about it. And I, I think that's the cool thing about making albums unique is that you're not always going to get the same thing, especially with me when I, I do not like using the same exact vocal the whole time during a song or in an album, it's you're not gonna you're gonna hear different variations and different things going because I think it's more appeasing to the and it's more appealing to the to the listener and all that kind of stuff because it can get it can get boring quick in some cases you know because I'm a fan too right and, right and when I listen to albums and it's like okay that's cool it's a cool thing but it's just too much of it right so we try to just switch it up a bit and be be a little different that's all that's cool um I want to just go back a little bit. Uh, you've been in the band for over six years, am I correct? About that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Can I, can I t- talk something serious? Uh, not serious, but like, how was the uh, how was the transition from being a fan of Ice Earth to becoming a full time member of Ice Earth? That that that's always fascinated me to find out what's that actually, what takes that kind of journey to tra- transition that. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a well, and you know it's funny because it is a bit of a journey. It is actually because, you know, um, before I was in Ice Earth, yes, I was a fan. Now I wasn't a super fan. I wasn't like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I've always loved every different. I've loved a lot of different bands and stuff like that. But of course, you know, I of course was a fan, and I've been to several Ice Earth shows throughout throughout my life. You know, younger and stuff, and I've always loved the band. Um, and in, as far as um, when I was called on to do to do the, to come and rehearse, like to try out for the band, um, yeah, man, like I was I was fucking stoked. Like I was just like, wow, this is amazing, you know. And it's you're you are you are, and the fanboy came out in me a little bit, you know. Like I hung up the phone and I was like, I was like, oh my god, you know, just jumping up and down. I'm gonna get to at least get to try out for Iced Earth, you know. And and it's a great wonderful legacy band and john john is just a great leader and uh and now of course we're 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 he's one of my best friends in the world and which is awesome that's a bonus you so it all worked out you know <laughs> could have we could have ended up hating each other who knows right but um it really worked out but anyway the transitional period is a little bit of wrapping your head around it it really is because um it, it does it well i guess i guess if you talk to people that have been that have won the lottery or that have had really awesome things happen in their life a lot of the a lot of people say you know i didn't believe it at first or i didn't actually didn't really sink in until i actually picked up the check or i actually in my case went and tried out and there's john schaefer picking me up from the indianapolis airport and i'm like what the hell this is actually real you know (laughs) and so so you get those there are moments of uh of you know there are surreal moments um but the cool thing was is that you know maybe for the first couple of months i was i had butterflies in my stomach you know cuz i'm around these guys like you know johnny's a legend and i don't want to fuck up and i don't want to say the wrong thing and all that kind of shit and and stuff like that but it was soon very soon and it was actually a blessing man but like even since the first day that he picked me up in 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 his truck i remember vividly we hit it off right away. We were laughing. We were we were having a good time. We were clicking, and within within a good six months of me being in the band, we were very fast and very very quickly becoming very good friends and very comfortable around each other. There was actually points where I forgot he was even who he was. You know what I mean? So I was just yeah. like, there was a cool transit. But yeah, there was some butterflies at the beginning. But to transition. Because then there's work to do, right, guys? So, like, yeah, right. we get in the band, and then it's like, okay, it's fucking work time. You know what I mean? 
and it was so busy with dystopia, as you guys know, we toured our asses off. We were out on the road a lot. And um, during, like, as soon as I got the gig, it was like, okay, we got to write an album. Let's write an album, Stu, me and you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, whoa. You know, and, but once we started getting into the work, everything numbed up and it just became right. It, everything felt right and um, everything clicked. And the transition, I think, within the first six months, I was well on my way, comfortable with them, and I couldn't think of anything else but just working with these guys and building a great bond and a relationship. And, uh, and I, it, it, was, it was awesome. So we came up with Dystopia. We, we did the, the album Dystopia, and I guess the rest is history. He, he kept me in the band. I obviously did something right. So. <laughs> but, do you uh, remember... <clears throat> Do you remember? Did you guys jam to some old songs first, or did you go straight into rea- into uh, writing? Well, um, like when I was rehearsing. Yeah. So when he, when I when I or when I rehearsed or when I tr- sorry when I tried out for the band, is that what you're asking? If we were writing. Yeah, just in the beginning, did you guys like go through and do a bunch of classic songs when you were already when you first right. started a band, or did you did you write right away? We were we were writing. So how it worked okay. was like. Like, I got the call from Century Media within five, six days. I was on a plane going to do the tryout. Went and tried out. He, he, we, he, to try out, I had to sing a couple of classic songs. Um, he okay. had the, he, but I was in his studio. So he actually had the instrumental versions of um, a, a few songs. And I had to sing, um, sing them. And he recorded me. And then he, he would listen to it and all that kind of stuff. And he really put me under a microscope, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, which was good because you need to do that. So, um, and then once we just, once he said, once he said, you know what, I want you in the band, it's all good. Then we started writing the album, literally. Okay. Which we started actually on the day, on the weekend that I were her, uh, I tried out with him. It was, I had to sing some classic Iced Earth songs and then he wanted to sit down and write a song with me to see how well I could write with him. And so basically, we went and we sat down and we wrote End of Innocence together. Um, And uh, that was really fresh with me because my mom, you know, uh, was battling cancer really bad at the time and stuff like that. And uh, so it was really, it was a really emotional subject matter, but I think it was something we could both click on because we were both talking about a lot of the losses that we had in our lives. And and John had suffered a lot of loss in his life. And uh, so it's like, well, let's you know what, let's click on it. And we did, and we clicked, so we wrote together. And then after we wrote that first song, it was literally, we were writing Dystopia together. Like I went out to Indiana and I stayed out there for like eight weeks. And uh, we wrote we wrote Dystopia together. And then he gave me, and then, because we had to get the album done first, but in the meantime, he gave me a big list of songs to learn <laughs> for when we go <laughs> on tour. So, right. <laughs> so... In in the middle of me writing, helping him write the album at in the during the day. Well, if it was time, I would start learning new songs for the set. Right, there were songs I'd never done before. Right, so the size the the Iced Earth set for for Dystopia. So um, for, to to get ready for that tour. So yeah, so I did that, and even during the recording process in Florida, when we were recording at Morris Sound Studios, I was in between vocal. In between, I was when I was recording a vocal track, I would come back and uh, go back into the foyer of Amora Sound Studios, and I would actually be rehearsing songs. So I'd be rehearsing and recording, and because it was a a shit ton of songs that we had to that I had to learn because I was just in the in the band, and we I needed a good roster under my belt, right? So, so it was good. It was really it was quite stressful, but like I said, even to revert back to the 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 first one of the first questions, you know. I was kept so busy that I had no time to worry about anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and it was like actually smart because he told me later, he's like, well, yeah, I wanted to keep you busy because or else you'd be a nervous wreck. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so okay. it, it was cool. It was cool. So, yeah, so that that's kind of how that went. Okay. Now, in our Iced Earth community here, uh, there's a lot of heavy-duty collectors. Do you collect any Iced Earth merchandise? yourself um i have well since i've joined the band i've acquired some really awesome pieces um and uh before that um i just had some i just had uh the just some vinyl that i had collected um and i had um a few like just some t-shirts and stuff like that but not major any major stuff when i joined the band then 
we ended up, you know, I ended up getting a few things and stuff like that. Now I, I like to collect memories and stuff over the years. And, nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's the next question? Sorry, we we kind of like pre-planned everything. Oh, that's, that's okay, man. That's uh, okay. Yeah, right. Um, you're talking about live just now. Uh, being super fans that we are, uh, we'd love to hear some deep cuts from the band's catalog. Is there any songs that you are itching to play live that you've not played yet? Oh wow. Um, I would like to do uh, "Travel in Stygian." Um, that would be a great song to do. Um, the list is so much. Uh. Uh, man, I would like to do, um, I know John hates it, but I'd like to do some more stuff off of Dante's Inferno, uh, or off of Burnt Offerings, I mean. I'd like to do more stuff off of the older catalog. Um, I would really like to do, um, Gettysburg. That would be awesome. I'd like to do, like, an epic, I would like to do, like, it would be cool to do, like, an epic, epic set, you know what I mean, where it's, like, like you got done all the epic songs, all the like right. 17 minute to 30 minute songs kind of thing, which would be killer. I think would be fun. Um, you do maybe a half a set of that and then half a set, you know, like do like a three hour show or something like that. And you do like all the big epics, <laughs> a few of the hits, right. right? That would be cool. But man, the list goes on. There's, there's a lot of them I'd like to do. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite funny that you mentioned Gettysburg because, um, when, when, uh, when you guys was on the plagues tour, you came to London uh, and uh, some people in the front of the, in the line with me, they were like, I don't care, they can scrap the whole set. They just played Gettysburg, I'm happy. So I think the fans would like that actually as well. So Hey, that would be that would be a great song to have under our belt if we didn't want to do the set list. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What's next? Sorry. Did you want to ask about the tour, Chuck? Um, Oh yeah, with the world tour being announced just recently, um, how how long can we expect for that to, to go on? And uh, you know, how many dates do you think you guys are going to end up doing? Um, not sure yet. That's all being worked on right now. I believe January the the January um, shows were announced. Um, I really have no answer for you on that, as they're okay. still doing it. So I really unfortunately just don't have an answer for you on that but i okay. i'm hoping we're hoping to be out there quite a bit and you know uh hope hoping to hit the markets so okay and it's been pretty well documented that after this touring cycle is over that john is going to do another demons and wizards project do you have yeah. any projects or anything that you're going to work on while he's doing that or are you just going to enjoy the downtime um i may just enjoy the downtime i have a lot of other things that i do in my life so um, so that can, that can definitely keep me busy. Um, if the right project ever came about, um, with the right people, um, then yes, maybe, maybe that would come to fruition. But to be honest and to be quite candid with you, I've seen the way that all goes <laughs> and it's not pretty for a lot of singers. And to be honest, when they, when, a, when, you decide to go and do those super group or side projects and you have stars in your eyes that it's going to be amazing. Demons and wizards is a totally different beast is totally different. It's one of those side projects that just worked. And John is very blessed to have Hansi with him and that they have still the hype that they have with demons and wizards. It's very rare to get that. Now with me, let's say I decided to form some super group or, wow, maybe I wanted to do my own solo band or something like that. I've just seen where it goes in the music industry, and it's usually not very good, and it usually doesn't end very well. Um, so uh, it's one thing that maybe I just don't really want to do. Um, I don't want to even expose myself to the possible failure of of that happening, and the po and the percentage is so much higher than if I was to do another project with, some super famous people, but even then it's just, I've seen it happen and it just, it just doesn't work out a lot of the time. Now it does some of the time, not going to lie. It does for certain people, but I don't know. I just don't think I have any stars in my eyes to start any side projects or do any collaborations with anybody, but I don't want to say it's never going to happen because you really never know. Who knows, man? Maybe, you know, who knows what will happen? I just can't tell you. So yeah, that's that's basically it. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got um, a question. I'm not I don't know how how far you how much information I have on this, but uh, 
again, uh, John has stated in many interviews that after this tour cycle or album cycle, uh, the band's going to be going independent. You're cutting ties with Central Media. Uh, yeah. How how is I Sturf geared up for the future? Well, it's it's all a plan. It's all it's all in the works right now. We're actually trying to devise a system and a a platform of doing things that um, not many bands have ever really done. We're hoping to pioneer. We're hoping to pioneer maybe a system for bands like us that maybe, you know, just are not really into the label thing anymore and they see that that, that, that the record label business model is actually dying um, and that independence is... For especially for a legacy band that already has fan like a lot of really loyal, awesome fans, um, we would need to come up with a system in order to like sell direct to them, uh, do all the publishing ourselves, do all of do everything ourselves, you know. And it is quite possible. So that as 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 to what that plan looks like and how it will and how them that machine will work, I can't right. tell you um, because it's going to take a while. But um, <laughs> we're really excited to pave our own destiny and not that we haven't before but to have more control over our own destiny um you know it's it's not to be honest guys it's not very fun um putting your heart and soul into a record like incorruptible for instance and handing it over to a record label and they basically do fuck all with it you know what i mean they basically yeah. it's very disheartening it's very disheartening because you put your heart and soul into something and then all of a sudden you get you you basically have to hand it over to a a second party that you don't know what they're going to do with it if they have any sort of they should have an invested interest but unfortunately the way that it's going and the way that you know the record label system is go like the whole business model it's it's dying and i don't think they even know what they're going to do anymore you know it's 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 very difficult so Bands like us have to start figuring out how to be more independent, how to have more control over our future. And, um, you know, and it, it never really puts a good taste in the record label's mouth um, right before you give them the album saying you're not going to sign their contracts either. <laughs> so right. that, that, that sometimes puts a bad taste in people's mouths. But to be honest, we've had that bad taste in our mouth for long enough, and I think it's time to get control over our own destiny. So... And again, how that destiny will fold out and how that machine will work is totally beyond me right now. Um, we have mm -hmm. some definite ideas and we have some things going around. And John is a very smart um, individual. He's been doing this for a long time. And uh, he's he's very, very tirelessly um, working on, on, uh, on the future and how to build that future. Nice. Um, I just want to bring up a, a, um, a like, follow up to what you've been talking about like record labels and um, last episode on this podcast we were talking about the burnt offerings album and yeah. how the background of the bands that basically that album was an answer to the shit that the band was going through at the time with yeah. like you know century media and the record labels and stuff like that yeah. and that just it happened to uh, produce one of the most evil pissed off angry albums <laughs> i've ever heard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it'll do that, you know. Emotions, <laughs> especially when you're an artist, it comes out in the art, right? Of course. Um, um, but uh, it's, it's. I think that album. You know, if you talk to John, he fucking hates that album. He, yeah, he, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, there's a horror show interview, and he's, he's 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 saying that he's not happy with any of it. Yeah, which so, is a shame but, because it's a great album in my opinion. It is, it is, and it's a fan favorite. But again, you, when you talk to the artist, he's his own worst critic, and uh, and that's how it is, right? Me yeah. too. I can pick right. apart every album I did from Dystopia to now. If we, if you got three hours, I could pick a pick that <laughs> shit apart. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, I could have done better here. I could have done, better. but you know what I mean. It is what yeah. it is. I tell you what, though, um, I'm just gonna fanboy for a little bit. Can I, can I, can I for a little bit, please? Sure, you can. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I was basically you speak, you're speaking about picking apart uh, Dystopia. I'm just gonna say Dystopia almost made me cry because okay. I was, I was basically looking forward to the album after I heard your version of Dante, which is my favorite version of Dante, by the way. I oh, heard that. I heard that. I love Matt's, but I don't know something about your version. I just prefer. Heard that I was like, holy fuck, this guy's the, the legit, holy shit! And yeah. there's there's a line, there's a line you say in Boiling Point: the air runs thick uh, with hostility. 
yeah. when, when you hit that scream, I was like, oh my god, it's the best thing ever, holy shit. And I was just like, <laughs> losing my mind, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. And, and, you know, that's, you know, not only do I do this because I love it, but I, I love... Like just seeing, you know, dude, you're smiling right now. You know, that's that's awesome to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm beside uh, myself, man. <laughs> yeah, man, and and it's it's really cool to see that. Like when when guys such as yourself that really appreciate the music, really, you know, and uh, you know, can can tell me that uh, that they do appreciate it and that they. I'm you know, I'm, well. I'm a pretty humble guy. Like I don't really take compliments very well, but uh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, do you have time to go into some viewer questions from our community? Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, Adam ha asks, how did, you just, how did you discover Iced Earth as a fan? As a fan, how did I discover Iced Earth? Well, um, obviously being in metal and just being – like there was this, um, there was this record shop in, in Vancouver where I got my start, Vancouver, British Columbia, called Scrape Records. And um, – when I when I was a young young lad, I when I got into metal, I found out that there was this heavy because I, I hated all the mainstream record stores because they didn't they never had what I wanted right so um, <laughs> I had to discover the underground scene and discover all the metal record stores anyway scrape records I went there and um, my actually the weirdest thing is is the the very first or the very the very first Ice Earth record I bought was Horror Show. And uh, the very second one was Tribute to the Gods. And I bought, I bought those all in one day. That was the first and second one I bought. I bought them in one day. And, um, and uh, I was hooked, man. I was hooked. And then I just had to buy every other album, basically. And, and then uh, I was totally into them for a while. And then I started getting into, man, I started getting into, like, lots of death metal. And I went in through a lot of, a lot of metal phases in my life, man, like, from power metal to death metal to black metal, I think it was just the fi like how I was feeling at that year. <laughs> you know what I mean? And doesn't me uh, doesn't everyone go through like a <laughs> kind of like phases? totally man? I, I think I was into almost every genre of metal, and then I sort of as I grew up, I just sort of figured out what I really liked, and and uh, it was the Ice Earth sound and those type like the Iron Maiden, Ice Earth, Judas Priest. I'm really into the classics, really into. Uh, I'm just really into the singing and stuff like that, but I've always loved like bands like Cynic as well because that was one of the very first bands that were doing like that. Well, it was more of a computer clean vocal, but then they did like the sort of harsher vocals with the clean stuff, and then, um, and then of course into Eternity, which I was in before, and then that kind of stuff. So, yeah, man, I've been doing into it all. I've always loved hybrid vocals and just and all anybody that does something. Different different but i've always loved melody and i think that's always stuck with me with my metal it's like it's got to have melody <laughs> right uh yeah uh that's cool man uh dino asks what are you listening to these days um what am i listening to these days um listen to uh i was listening actually revisiting some lost horizon um they Daniel are, Hyman, awesome, they are awesome. amazing yeah Bye-bye. Hold on, i got to kiss my wife goodbye. One second. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, Lost Horizon. Um, but I've actually been really getting into, um, like I've, I've been listening to a lot of Kansas lately. <laughs> uh, um, but I've also been listening to a lot of really obscure 70s uh, prog rock, like really like one-off weird German stuff. <laughs> So it's, but it's like super, I don't know, really, really cool, like 70s psychedelic kind of stuff. So I've been getting into that. I'm into all sorts of different stuff, man. I like it all. Nice. As long as it's good. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Richard, Richard asks, uh, have you got any funny or interesting stories from the road with Iced Earth? Oh my God, too many. And if I told you, <laughs> I'd get arrested. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my God, man. Uh, just uh, there's there's like this it, it's such a blur like to be honest i hate this question i absolutely hate it but i i will try to the best of my ability um one of one of the crazy ones was um actually had to do with me uh i we the last summer festivals we were on we had a hell of a time with lofenza so they were 
they were canceling flights because of a drop of rain. And if you know anything about being in Munich or Germany or any of those airports, Lufthansa loves to cancel flights if they have like a little bit of drop of rain or something like that. So we were, we were, we were like, it was a really bad situation because this was probably the fifth flight over the summer that had been canceled. And, and it was really bad excuses and we were catching them in all sorts of lies and stuff like that. And so anyway, we, we ended up getting stranded in at the, in Munich for the night. So they gave us a hotel and we were all pretty, we were all pretty pissed. So, <laughs> so we went to the hotel and we were like, you know what, let's just go to the lobby and drink. And that was probably one of the worst mistakes because <laughs> we, we basically took over that thing and we were, we were drinking and we were acting like a bunch of pirates, man. We were, we basically took over the hotel. We were running around the hotel we ended up in one of the hotels. We were all rolling on the floor. We basically just almost destroyed the hotel room. We were—I remember there was broken glass everywhere, and we were laughing and having, just trying to let off a bunch of steam. So we thought we were getting away with it, of course. So we all head back to our respective rooms, and I was in my room, and I had some whiskey I was finishing off. So I was finishing it off, and I was pumping a bunch of metal, like I, like full blast, like I had this little speaker that's like really loud. And it's like a Bluetooth speaker. And I was like one man party in my in my hotel room and and uh i'm freaking out and all of a sudden i hear this boom 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 on my front door and all of a sudden i hear this policia policia and like it's like eight <laughs> cops at my front of my door and this huge cop and they they thought i was fighting someone they thought i was like because i was i was busting out falsettos i was singing and everything like that <laughs> And they, they come in and they're just freaking out. They're like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? They're like, are you on drugs? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was like eight cops that had to like figure out what was wrong with me. And they asked me if I was the one that flipped over the table in the front foyer. And I, I had to lie and said no. <laughs> anyway, great. that was, a, that was uh... a slight story there. But man, the list goes on. We've, we've got a lot of crazy stories, that's for sure. John and I butting heads on a on a bus till our our basically our our skin broke open and we kept smashing our heads together. There was blood everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, man. Uh, nope. that, Larry asks uh, if you were not involved in the music industry, what do you think you'd be doing instead? Um. Wow. Uh. I. I. Well. Um. <laughs> I've always loved music and I've always wanted to be involved in the industry. So I really don't can't fathom doing anything else. But um, I do, I do have always actually, if I wasn't doing music, I would probably get involved in the, in the weed, in the new legal weed industry. Why not make a million? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this, the whole country and everyone's like legalizing it and everyone's making millions. So maybe I'd do that. Maybe that would be fun. Uh, <laughs> Stu, you know, it's gone on YouTube, right? Exposed. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't he did say, say I legal. Involved. I didn't say I was involved. I said oh, maybe okay. in a in yeah. an alternate universe if I wasn't doing. Uh, but of course, legally, of course, I would be doing it legally because they're yeah, legalizing okay. it. Right? <laughs> don't do anything illegal. Um, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's so many things you you're, can do in this world. Who knows? That's crazy. I don't you're, know. You're too busy being a nice to virus. You know I mean? Yeah, I'm too busy being an Eisters virus to think about anything else. <laughs> and bring uh, it awesome to you guys. That uh, that's basically wraps it up, really. Um, speaking of questions okay. you hate, we we did try to make it kind of interesting and not we go right. Is that a stock question? Yeah, don't ask him that. Like we're trying to keep it kind of, <laughs> right. keep it kind of interesting. No, <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. One of the, actually, this is actually one of the better interviews I've had in a long time, man. I do a lot of interviews, and some of them are really really boring <laughs> so, so i appreciate the oh, uh and the last in the last two weeks we've watched them all to prepare so <laughs> right on man. for sure right on. uh yeah uh one last thing uh yep. do you do you have a message for the fans that you would like to oh give? man um as always man we appreciate each and every single iced earth fan or any fan of heavy metal man we, we appreciate you because without without you guys we would basically be nothing <laughs> we'd be playing in shows in front of nobody right so nobody would be right. so without you guys um without you guys uh you know we we wouldn't be anything and uh, we can't wait to be out on the road again um 
we, we apologize it isn't sooner, but we can't wait for next year to happen for us to hit the road and play for you guys and see all see you guys and hear you guys singing. Um, all the awesome markets. We're trying to hit some markets maybe that we potentially haven't hit before. So we're excited, man, to you guys. And I want you guys to, obviously, all you guys keep safe out there. Obviously, don't drink and drive, and we want to see you guys safe at the next shows and stuff like that. So uh, be healthy, be happy, and be safe, guys. And uh, we nice. much respect to you all. Nice. I just want to say uh, I love Incorruptible, and uh, I very much appreciate you being part of my favorite band in the world. So. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you being an awesome fan. Thank you. Thanks. That's what I just okay. want to say. Thank, thanks so much for coming on, Stu. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, from mm -hmm. the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, you're creating metal with the greatest band in the world, and I love you for it. So. Thank thanks, you, man. We we love you guys for for coming out, like I said, and enjoying the music. And uh, and hey, thanks for you guys for going out and spreading the word on the podcast. And uh, and um, maybe we can do this interview again, uh, maybe in a in a few months or something like that. Maybe next that, year or something like that. That sounds. You great. are welcome anytime, my friend. Okay. Thank you. Go. Take care, guys. You too. Thank, Thank you. Thanks a lot, Stu. Thank bye -bye. you. Free time. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye. That was the interview with Sue Blog, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Thank you to Sue Blog for coming on. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. Deep down to our bottom of my heart, you are awesome, and we thank you. Yes. Yes, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody in the group for uh, making uh, our group one of my favorite things to do on Facebook, just everybody's interaction and sharing of pictures and uh, memorabilia and stuff. It's, it's made a really fun community. And we're very lucky to be less than two months in and already have had two great interviews with uh, Gene Adam and Stu Block. And we're always going to work to make it a podcast that we would want to watch. So we're always going to keep working hard to uh, make it fun for everybody. And I, and I want to say, Bill Owen, thank you so much for sending me this cool stuff. You're too, you're too good to us, you are, Bill. Like, yes. it's, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm lost for words now because I've, we've just had Stu Block on. Bill Owen has sent me stuff, and it's just, this podcast is just insane. The, the amount of ground we've pushed in this short amount of time, and we wouldn't be able to do it without all their supporters. And we thank all the fans on the group. We thank, thank all the subscribers on the YouTube channel. We thank to all the former members of iSurf that want to talk to us, that want to engage with our community. It's been great. And, yeah, and we're, we're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep bringing out episodes. We're going to bring you more guests. We've got a couple of guests coming up soon that we're really excited to talk to. So, yeah, Podcasting Stone is the place to be for everything iSurf. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> the only podcast, the, the only podcast that talks about everything I surf, when a stupid American met a British wanker. That's the deal, man. Thank you, everybody. See you later. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>